but welcome to anyone who's joining the live stream or ch uh, catching this on YouTube post live event. Uh, I hope you're all having a wonderful evening uh, or day or morning or some other time. Uh, maybe it's really early in the morning for you and this is just a, a lovely distraction for your day. Uh, today I am joined by Trisha Shatani. Uh, do you mind uh, telling me a little bit about yourself please, Trisha? Hi, I'm Trisha Shatani. I've been working as a software tester for the past seven and a half years. It's going to almost be eight years. Um, I've worked with a company like uh, uh, recent uh, Amazon India uh, and then Merck in Singapore and now uh, we're currently with Adidas uh, as a software team and I've been also recognized as one of the 125 awesome tester um, and agile testing blog uh, agile, agile testing days blog and yeah uh, my Twitter handle is Trisha Chetani. I'm, I'm just searching up in uh, LinkedIn as well. Yeah, Trisha Chetani. You brought the first one. Ah, there we go. Cool. Lovely. Yes, uh, I, I'm, my memory is starting to get re refreshed now. Um, Adidas is a really interesting uh, company. Why would Adidas, a company who makes shoes, need a software tester? Um, in Adidas, it's, it's like when I've, I've heard uh, from the leads or the directors, they talk Adidas actually tests in every phase when they are preparing up shoes. Uh, they need to make sh ensure that their quality of shoes is very much good to, for the end user. So it's, it's in, in DNA of the Adidas to test. So why not to test software? And they have like, before joining Adidas, I was not knowing like Adidas has a, such a wonderful stream for software uh, developers and they have a, like as competitive things up, like like Amazon or Google or uh, they, they are developing themselves like that. So. It's, it's really good for me to work with Adidas and gain those knowledge from Adidas. Mm. And they, they do test in every phase and that test, test was, testing is very important and critical things for them. Hmm. Yes, I think I've had um, chats with someone else on the Adidas software team. Uh, there was someone who I did some pair testing earlier on in this channel um, before it's in its current rendition. Uh, was a developer, the test test engineer, I think, from Adidas, and basically we tested browser extensions, um, how to use dev tools uh, across different browsers and compare Android and Firefox. But it's really interesting to come full circle and to be talking to someone else from. Whoops, my focus is gone. Yeah. Uh, uh, there we go. Yeah, now it's clear. Now it's clear. Yes, um, I'm having some difficulties, some technical challenges with the uh, setup I have at the moment. And I don't know how to, I have to investigate that a little bit more. Um, so Adidas, their main office, is their head office based in Spain? No, uh, they, uh, the, head, the main head office is in Hwaizu. Okay, cool. Um, and uh, what's been your favorite thing about working for, for Adidas? Um, uh, I'm, I'm getting an opportunity to continuous learning and continuously expanding my skills. Mm. Yeah, it's not exactly one of the first tech companies you think of off the top of the list of uh, mm -hmm. uh, famous companies to work for, but it is a brand that a lot of people are, are aware of. Do you get a staff discount on, on Adidas shoes? Yeah, we do get 44% discount and uh, that is an awesome thing. <laughs> Good thing if you like comfy Adidas shoes. Sorry? Good thing if you like comfy Adidas shoes. Yeah. I think uh, I think one of my favorite pairs of Adidas, I think, were the ones... Um, and this is just a random tangent. Uh, Freddie Mercury, I think, wore a pair of Adidas on his Live Aid concert tour. Where it's, it's a very iconic shoe, so... I'm I'm not very much into shoes, but I really like the Ultra Boost, uh, the brand Ultra Boost and uh, Terex, those kind of brands because it's it's much more comfortable than any other brand. Because, um, but I'm not completely into like each and every uh, articles which is being published as a shoes for Adidas. Hmm. Um, okay. Um, 
And what's been the most rewarding project you've worked on over your career? Um, uh, uh, the, the startup company which was recent, uh, where I worked as a quality analyst, I got an opportunity to learn many more things uh, because previously I was just doing a, a web browser testing as well as mobile testing. But here I got to learn about uh, like API testing, backend testing, and performance testing, those different kind of testing. And people were asking me to do a little bit more on like a security testing. And I also, like since it was a startup, I got an opportunity to actually overcome the challenges of flakiness and make the test more reliable and make the uh, test execution faster. So previously, and I was not there, only the developers were there. They were taking one now. And when I went there, after being in the team and understanding the challenges, overcoming those, uh, like it took seven or eight months, but our test execution time came down to five minutes. And it was a huge achievement for the team. Wow. How, what was the main things you implemented to get from a one hour build to five minutes? Um, like I first up, uh, like it was, it was a complete genre. It was not only me, it was a whole team effort. Like the developer have worked on improving the performance. Uh, like let's say uh, the web browser was loading very slowly. So they improved on queries or they improved on logs. I also improved on testing uh, a framework, like adding screenshot logs or uh, uh, like isolating the environment running in Docker. So those kind of thing I've implemented at the higher level and that's where I got to. Okay, cool. That sounds like a really cool uh, adventure then into into that one. Yes, um, I definitely. Uh, to kick off today's uh, pair testing session, I thought we would talk about the, the dreaded username and password field. <laughs> Uh, okay. Hopefully, it's a piece of software that uh, nearly everyone's come across at some point. And today, just to keep things light and easy, uh, we're just going to talk about our different uh, approaches to how we might test a particular field like this. So if someone's asking you to test this, what are the first thoughts that kind of come to mind? Uh, the first thought will come to my mind as whether I'm able to log in uh, with the correct username and password or not. The positive way. Mm -hmm. Whether the application works or not. That's the first thing that will come on my mind. Okay, let's see if we can find an actual username and field. If I go to, um, I guess, uh, amazon.com.au, not that I'm trying to pick on amazon.com.au, I think I've got. Um, uh, it remembers my password, so I don't have to accidentally leak my password. Okay. So, okay, I've actually <laughs> updated my password. Okay. A and uh, it seems that the cloud syncing is not quite working. Okay, I'm not going to pick on Amazon.com.au. Um, I will actually uh, we'll use the WordPress uh, admin login um, because that one. Um, I don't mind so much. I can always rotate. Whoops. I can always rotate uh, passwords if I accidentally leak anything. So, okay. Log in with username or password. Um, I don't think that one works anymore. Oh, okay. I might have to leak my password. So if I try this one, which is the default one that's logged in, Oh, apparently that still does work. Yeah, and you got a, a chance to actually have a two-factor auth uh, authentication wherein either you are sending it to your email address for verification. Uh, no, this is more a verify the admin email. Um, I need to update it because this is an old email that I don't use anymore. Oh, okay. But I, I just, I ignore it every time I log in. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, and so, okay, cool. I'm I'm now in a, a dashboard for, for for WordPress. So if I I can then log back out, and um, so we've got with username and password. What other testing? 
What other other testing I could do? I could I enter invalid username and password. Cool. We've got okay. We've got um invalid invalid username and password. Yeah, and we could check for what is our error message over there, like unknown username, uh, uh, check again and try your email address. So uh, this could be a hint for a hacker that uh, like uh, sometimes or sometimes end up, uh, what do I say? We, we do check what is our error message in uh, developer tools, we, exactly what is the control over there they are giving. Mm, yeah, there's um, there's also a potential way to hack WordPress to get yes. the username or email address. If you look at um, a, an existing blog post that someone's published, um, yeah. under the author details, there's often the, the username. Um, and then you can use that as a starting point to try and uh, hack. So this one's a valid username, but invalid password. And yeah. it says there's a different error message. Yes, is incorrect. So this this gives the you a uh, hacker a potential example like okay, I'm entering a incorrect you password and he will try with a brute force strategy. Mm. Yeah, it is a potential security flaw with uh, WordPress. Yes, and it is very easy to harvest that information from any any WordPress site too. Yes. Uh, that is a security flaw. In, in terms of security testing, if we were to follow along with that thread, um, what are some other concerns with the username password field? Um, I would actually check about uh, like well, what is about HTTP and HTTPS. Is it like uh, when I'm actually logging in, it is HTTPS more secure protocol or it is like not a secure protocol. Connection is secure, so it is HTTPS. That's mm -hmm. the first check I will do. And then yep. the second check I will do, like whether the password is masked, like when I'm entering any other person is actually able to see my password or not. So the password is masked or not. So like um, it could be a chance of a shoulder, a shoulder shopping threat. Like my friend who is sitting next to me and I'm entering a password, he, he could see my password and he would know what is my password. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't be testing um, uh, some of this stuff live if it wasn't, if, if I knew there were going to be issues with unmasked passwords because uh, uh, this being on the internet, <laughs> uh, well, technically, I guess, you know, I've existed on the internet long enough that most of my older passwords had been leaked at some point. Well, that's uh, that's really potential threat, and it's, it could lead to a danger also because people hacker might know what is a pattern of your password you are giving to your WordPress website. Yes, um, there is. Um, so, have I been pawned? Is a website you can check to see if your emails have been part of any uh, known breaches. So, for example, I have this old email that I just use for spam accounts. Um, I've had it since I was twelve, hence the twelve in the uh, username. Um, okay. So, I was a lot less secure with uh, what I signed up for as a as a twelve year old. Um, and you can see when I search for this one, I've, this email has been part of 12 data breaches. Wow, I never knew about this website and even this kind of uh, stuff which is existing on internet. Thanks for sharing with me. Yeah, uh, this is run by a, uh, a guy in Australia. He lives in Brisbane and oh. uh, his name's Troy Hunt, speaks at conferences and does training on, on security testing and whatnot. That's, that's really nice. Uh, I would really look for my thing and see what does happen over there because now I'm afraid after seeing this. Um, if, uh, no, actually, I won't do that live for you. I'll let you, uh, I'll okay. let you search for that uh, at some point. I'll share the link with you later that you can search yeah, for yeah. it. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, Thanks for sharing with me. I, I was not knowing about this thing which is existing on the internet. 
<laughs> you can even subscribe um, to get notified when your account is compromised in new breaches as well. Okay, okay. That's, that's really interesting. It's really cool. Thanks. Hmm. Okay. Um, so we've, uh, what were we, where were we up to? We Might... were talking about what are the other security flaws which can happen in, uh, like, and login. Hmm. Do we want so to continue? We about, um, I, I could think of right, redirection when I'm actually clicking on logging and it's clicking, it's actually redirecting to some other website. It could be a phishing attack or any other thing. Yeah, we could, uh, I guess, uh, where's the, we can inspect that and uh, probably go to network sources and see if there were any uh, API calls. So I think, is it is it just the XH? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and if I log in with those ones, what type of network calls? <laughs> are being made. So uh, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll make that a little bit larger. Um, so there's... They are giving you SEO scores. Yeah, getting my uh, app version. This is some admin data. Yeah, so this is just what's needed to display the, the dashboard, I guess. Okay. Oh, and I've gotten a admin equals true response. And nothing in that one. A bunch of uh, JavaScript. Yes. Uh, I got a 403. Where did we get an error from? An active... An active yeah, user token must be used to retrieve notifications. Okay. Yeah, get a couple of errors. You might get the server address from here. Or, like, or the server timestamp, it was somewhere in the API call just now I saw. It was sharing the server timestamp. Not this one. Uh, we we just saw one. Oh, server timestamp. Yeah. yeah. So if you go to click on the headers, you might see what is a which is a server, which is a IP address over there. Okay. That. Host. Uh, we do have the uh, IP address remote address here. Yeah, uh, and if somebody wanted to spam, they can actually continuously hit your server for I, infinite time. Yeah, I'd ask people please not do that because that would make my cl cloud bill kind of expensive. Yeah. Um, because I actually have this uh, website on a Google Cloud instance. Okay. Um, so that even if someone does try to hit my address a lot, um, which I've done once or twice with doing a security scan because that, you know, chucked 35,000 requests at, at my website. And actually, I can check how much uh, I was charged that month. Uh, oh, no, if I log into my Google Cloud console, I might, have the, I might have the risk of leaking API keys. And uh, I, I wouldn't want to do that because then someone could just charge my account lots of money. Yeah, uh, like we talked about spam, like because uh, uh, having a spam, uh, spamming somebody uh, would be also another kind of security attack. Yeah, a denial of service, DDoS attack. Yeah. Yeah, yeah with, um, with cloud infrastructure these days, um, I guess it gets a little bit harder to do a DDoS attack. But there's also, um, give me a second. Yeah, sure. Another type of uh, DDoS attack, um, uh, slow DDoS attack or something like that, slow loris. Okay. Uh, a slow loris attack is where um, you would do a normal HTTP request. 
So you normally get this request response, um, yes. but a slow loris one um, just sends a byte. Instead of sending the whole request, um, just sends a little byte. And then that consumes the the socket and the the connection. So you just instead of sending a whole request, you just send a small byte and another small byte, and you just make the um, um, the the port that for that internet traffic uh, is uh, completely blocked. Okay. Um, I, I'm not aware about this. I'm learning from you. So you're, you're mentioning uh, it's, it's sending a byte, uh, byte of request multiple times to the server. And it's not sending a complete request, but I'm, I was wondering how does the server would know, like, is that authenticate request and he need to send a response or not? And what what does, like, because usually when we send a request, a server should know that it's, it's coming from the right person and that that's why he will authenticate with the token and he will send back the response back. But with this, if, if there is only a chunk of information, then how does that work? Yeah, I think it just it just consumes the the port. Um, so it operates by using partial HTTP requests, um, and it just keeps the connection open for as long as it can. So instead of the server being able to turn back, yes, you're a valid user or not. It's just like, who are you? Can you finish your request, please? Because, you know, I'm waiting. Please send me more information. Okay. <laughs> um, but apparently, yeah, apparently multiple HTTP requests um, and they open a thread for each request. Um, So eventually the server will time out if it uh, has to wait like for more than 30 seconds freeing up the thread. So to prevent the timeout, so the, the attacker just sends a little partial request header. Okay. But uh, if, if the server send, uh, like, sorry, client is sending out multiple partial requests also, uh, the, will the server will open up and share his data or it will still lock up for getting a whole response. How does a hacker will actually uh, introduce or like will actually make an attack in between sending a multiple request? Yeah, well, that's I think that's the premise is that I'm learning as well. This is just something that someone in the workplace mentioned that could be used, yeah. and I've never I've never set up one of these attacks before. Um, so uh, it, I think it's just a way to do a denial of service. So basically you lock your server um, so that no one else can get in and use it. And that's the oh, whole point of, okay, okay. Um, of spamming someone's IP address is to overload the server so that you can't serve. No one else, admins can't log in. No one can use your website, basically bringing your website down. Okay, now I understand what is the motivation of the hacker over here? while doing this yeah so um so this one is um, a low bandwidth way of causing a denial of service attack but apparently some mitigations um such as using a reverse proxy restricting access based on ip address or maximum connections per ip address increasing server availability um uh, and like this is an advert for for cloudflare flare but um okay that's that's good it's interesting to learn i learned two things new from you today that's really yeah. interesting yeah i haven't actually researched that much into how you could set up a slow loris attack but yeah that's that's Quite but, but it was it was interesting like yeah and when i'm seeing it could really make uh, when when i understand the motivation of the hacker like sending a slow request to the server so that nobody else can send a request and uh user's website cannot cannot be used those kind of motivation are, yeah it's good it's it's real hmm. yeah i think when 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 we're thinking about security testing um it's uh, thinking like what does the hacker want to achieve and approaching it from that the, the hacker mindset um, I think is an interesting exercise um, because I guess there's a couple of different things that uh, a hacker would try to uh, 
uh, try to do when they're trying to explore a system and usually it's just you explore the surface layer to see if you can just get more information and if that more information can lead to a vulnerability that you may know of or a compromised system. I think the if you were trying to hack a system, being able to get unauthorized admin access, that there is the uh, that's there the money part. <laughs> If you could, if you could compromise a system such that you've got unauthorized admin access, that's that's a good job there. But there's also so many other bits of information that um, yeah. you could be trying to discover. So um, I guess you could try that, to. That that could be another possible uh, uh, idea. Test idea could be on our uh, after DDoS attack is like we could check for different ownership whether. I'm I'm logging in with uh, with a username and password, which is of admin, but I'm getting a normal user ownership. Hmm. Yeah. So the uh, the um, uh, account privileges. Yeah. Um. So for example, on my blog, um, I might have a guest blogger and set them up with a guest account, or yeah. uh, if I've got an editor, I'll set them up with an edit access but they can only edit existing posts, but they can't maybe write new posts. Yes. Um, and I think technically uh, WordPress has a way of creating an account. I remember when I first set up this blog a couple of years ago, I used to get spammed so much, like people just creating, bots just creating fake accounts uh left right and center so um i don't think i have all that many users on oh i oh, know they they still exist <laughs> um and there are oh so i deleted a whole bunch of them but there's you know 14 you? um and and you could see on the top three are administrator and which we were talking about Three are administrator, one is editor, and ten is customer. Yeah, I'm so like I don't know how these random people created um, created accounts, but I will delete these accounts. Yeah. Um, I think I deleted a whole bunch at some point. Um, but obviously, there's been bots that have been trying to compromise my 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 website. I'm sorry for you. It's, it's really pain to actually handle all this and think from all this perspective while actually focusing on content and getting users for the website and thinking of all those perspectives, we need to think about all this. Yeah, I think I think there's a I've got some of the anti spam plugins. Okay. Um and um if I view the details it might give me uh uh Okay, cool. No, um, settings. Um, it might actually give you numbers on like, oh yeah, in the past six months, wow. 159 spam. Um, um, That's a huge number. And it's those 15 accounts that were created were missed by by this by this filter. Ah, uh, really um, huge number. Oh, I'm gonna. I didn't realize there was going to be uh, an API key on this field, on this page. Okay. That's, I will. That's a bad thing for you now. You yep. need to change it. I need to rotate my API keys. Yes. Um, oh, well, that, uh, I'll figure that one out. Um, yeah. OK. So yeah, that that um, account and authentication privileges. I think one of the things that with testing like a username and password field, there's like context related questions though, right? Yeah. So why why are we testing this? Uh, we are testing because uh, the first thing I can think of, user can successfully log in and do something with the website. And second thing I can think of, it, it's giving up protection to the user that he can actually access his own information, which are secured and displayed in the website for him. No other else in the world can use his information. 
Mm. I think the uh, the direction I was trying to go down that that one. If someone's like passed a username password field in front of you and asked you to test that, um, if they're using like um, you can ask things like, was this built recently? How long has this worked in production? Okay. Um, to 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 help you figure out what you need to test, rather than um, it like as testers, it's really okay. easy to to jump down the the rabbit hole of let's start testing this, let's let's chuck all these scenarios and and see what we can learn, but. Okay. No, Maybe. no, I was thinking from the usability perspective, you are thinking from uh, like, what are the questions our tester could ask to test at? Yeah, so if we were trying to figure out, do I need to investigate a week into testing this? How much time do I uh, want to spend testing this? Is it even worth testing this? Yes. Um, because at the end of the day, I mean, like your time is time is limited, and you, yes. there's only so many things you can focus on. Yes. But that's that's okay. I mean, like if you were, um, what other questions could you ask in this situation? Um, I, I would ask like, uh, what what is the history of this product? Is there something similar uh, something relevant, which I can check? Then other I could ask for like who's a person whom I can talk to like it could be a developer it could be a product owner somebody who are in the team mm. what are the versions of this particular uh, changes mm. yeah and then and then if it turns out look we've had some customers complain that login hasn't actually worked for them. Yeah, like what are the bugs we can, yeah, you're right. What are the bugs, the existing bugs? Mm. And then, oh, not bugs, existing bugs. Um, and yeah, and once you've got like, you develop that idea of, of context, I think then it can be useful to do a deep dive into things like security testing. Because usually uh, a username password field, I guess, is the most the most used feature of most websites, apps, and um, and because it does both authentication and authorization, you really want to make sure that type of stuff is working correctly. That's but true. if someone tells you, "Oh, it's just it's just a third party integration. We use Google Authentication or Apple Pay ID um, or any other web based logins," do you need to test it as much? No, I don't really don't think so. We need to test as much, but we would actually check are still the integration is working fine or not. Yeah, and then that that means you can uh, save more time if it's yeah. if it's using a third party system. Whereas yeah. if if someone's like, no, we've just had some developers uh, build this from scratch, and this is the first time we're we're putting this into production, uh, then it's like, well. Uh, <laughs> we need to test each and every corner case and since the uh, username and password and login feature is very important it, it takes like a little bit like thinking from all the perspective but you're right if, if it does that like first 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 part of the develop, uh, release mm. so if we're following like things that are kind of like perf uh, security testing there's also I guess things like performance Yes. Uh, what type of testing would come under that category? Um, uh, for performance, I would think like, uh, what are the maximum number of username and password could be stored on the server? Uh, what could be a maximum login a user can do like in the website at that point of time? maximum active login for the user that could be another from the performance perspective yeah we can have like logins per like logins per minute or something like that yeah um uh like maybe how many how many active sessions yes uh what 
Yeah, and like we can set up something like uh, soak test of maximum login and logout and check because logout is a similarly like it, it would check for the complete flow of login and logout. Mm. I think when you're doing uh, soak testing of websites, sometimes talking about the 99th uh, percentile, um, would you mind just explaining that term? in your own words uh, for anyone who hasn't heard it before uh from my perspective what is 99 percentile is like 99 percent of the time uh when i'm sending a request to a server the 99 percent of the time uh this is what the percentage is if it is 99 95 percent means 95 percent of the time the response the request or the latency or the throughput is that's that's how i understand it personally I, uh, yeah. Sorry, I just realised I'd set the wrong title on the live stream for the for the previous person, um, because again I'm having technology problems today, um, uh, that I was unable to set the title, and I'll just have to modify that uh, post live stream. Um, <laughs> for that's okay. No, no issues. We are having a good conversation, and I'm learning new things and. I'm also sharing a new thing, so I'm really happy to have this conversation. Yeah, um, I didn't really have a huge amount planned for um, for diving deep into testing. I just I'm like I'll just put the username password because like that's it's easy <laughs> just to talk about lots of different ways of of testing like this one. Um, yeah. If if this is a mobile or web form. I guess there's uh, different devices to consider as well. Yes. Uh, I think my mind map is getting a bit small, a bit too large. Um, device specific testing. Yeah. Uh, and what kind of comes even, to mind? Even uh, like when you are talking about different uh, form factors, like uh, different OS, uh, like. There could be a Samsung, they, they could be iOS, so those will also. And then in OS, different kind of browsers. Yeah. Eh, eh. iOS, and then we've got some things like browsers. Um, and then, yeah, using metrics to help, I guess, guide what you yes. could test on, on some of those things. Um, if most of your audience uses Chrome, then you might not need to test all that much on Safari or just every yeah. on occasion. That's true. I agree. The metrics are really helpful. So we can add metrics as a, a separate, uh, what do I say, thread. Yeah, as a separate idea. And this is this is getting tiny. Not even I can see this now. <laughs> we talked about so many test ideas. It happens when testers are sitting together and they are discussing what can we talk, uh, what, what we can test about this small small piece of information. As like it, it becomes huge and endless. Mm. It usually, it usually happens. Mm. Um, I think like taking a step back and doing some slightly more um, um, ad, ad hoc user um, uh, scenarios. So um, sometimes like taking a defocusing approach where it's like, okay, I've dived deep into this particular topic. I've brainstormed a whole bunch of stuff. Um, now I just want to refresh my brain and see if I can discover anything new. So if you're on like um, a browser, you know, going backwards and forwards, op opening multiple browsers, doing all of this kind of, uh, it's maybe seen as ad hoc or a little bit random because you're not actively looking to prove it works correctly. You're more just trying to find edge cases where it might be a little bit odd. So, uh, like, I, I was thinking about the functional testing. We didn't talk about the functional, like, uh, what if what happens if we are uh, entering let's say special key characters or when we are directly submitting it without entering a username and password those kind of like usual combinations yeah 
Um, so functional stuff, and by that we're going to say things like um, uh, special characters, yeah. um, uh, character limits. Yeah. Um, there is, if you're using, um, so sometimes logins will have both username or email. Yeah. So it's like, do you set up a username? Can you then log in with the email? And, and yes. vice versa, if you, yeah. can you swap your username and email and still be able to log in? Yes, that's, that's completely true. Um, we and then, or, or space on, or like either we don't enter the username or password. Nothing is, we entered, we directly click on login button. What happens? Yeah. Um, no entries. Um, so let's, let's do that one. I need to. Eh, come on, log out. Uh, <laughs> log out. There we go. So if we don't enter anything, yeah. Okay, I get error messages. Uh, M two. Um, but yeah, because it's got this option of username or email address, then comes the question of what is a valid email address. Yeah, that's true. And I think there's this blog post. And it's actually quite old now. It's back in 2003. And it was uh, 2007. And someone's like, I thought I knew how to validate an email address. And then they read the spec. <laughs> and so <laughs> would you believe this here? That's a valid email address. <laughs> this here with the, with the quotes? It is okay. valid. This and, is... This is crazy. <laughs> this is data, and if, if we are finding a bugs around this, like, and the developer have to fix it, they will be like, oh my god. <laughs> yep. Um. But yeah, this here is technically a a, a valid email address. Okay. But I'd be fine if websites did not accept um this this hacky email. And there's also like character limits on an email address. Like you can have up to 256 characters, I think, in your email. Yes. Uh, yeah, and this this goes more into the like, how do you validate? Um, this there are some interesting links and to test, and if we really need to uh, like find all those edge cases. Oh to talk about um back onto that security mindset there's also this big list of naughty strings um that you can just copy and paste into fields uh and see if uh different things hop up so these yeah. are these are protected uh keywords that are often used in programming languages um we've got some numeric strings that mm. could cause that could cause issues um, and we've got, oh, ASCII characters. Yeah. And uh, I guess Japanese or Korean or Chinese, which are a, a, a two byte character. Okay. So yeah, what if I had an email with, uh, which had some of these characters in it? Some special That's characters. Really interesting to test all those. Emojis. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right to left strings. Cool. Uh, strings with corrupted text. Oh. Uh, and then this is just a bunch of different um, rendering versions. And then we've got cross-site scripting, like all of these uh, JavaScript strings that could cause um, issues if you register an account with this and then display it back to the user. Wow, like it's, 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 it's basically alert messages in JavaScript, which is... Yeah, so there's a big list of those ones. Wow. Oh, and then uh, SQL injection. Well, we didn't talk about all this. Server code injection. Wow. Like if you're just trying to touch temp files and things. This, this is really crazy. Yeah. MS DOS. 
and there's there's a bunch of strings here that can uh, can crash with different I versions of iMessage. So mm -hmm. on a uh, there used to be like on old versions of iOS, if you sent someone this string, it would just crash their phone. It's really interesting to to know about all this and test. Uh, I'll definitely look at this particular thing. It's it's really interesting. Yeah. Thank you for sharing all this. Uh -huh. it's, a, it's always good to revisit this. Oh, yeah. and uh, some innocuous strings which are blocked by profanity filters. Um, so, um, for example, Horniman Museum. Yeah. J Jimmy Clithero. Yeah. Uh, you mean to say we cannot search this in Wikipedia or we cannot search in the Google? Uh, no, uh, there's, there's, um, okay, let's, um, we'll go into the, the Wikipedia article that reference, um, and the term is called the Sun, uh, Scunthorpe problem, um, because Scunthorpe has this word, um, right in the start of it, a lot of profanity filters go, that's a naughty word, we're not going to allow you to, so, it used to be that you couldn't search for the Scunthorpe hospital, because okay. it's got the word cunt in it. Okay, okay, I understand. <laughs> um, and so there's 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 a bunch of words uh, that um, are blocked, are unintentionally blocked um, oh. by spam filters. Now, now I understand what what do you mean? And okay, I never knew about this, and like I was thinking, we cannot search about this. <laughs> yeah, so there's, so like these, these words here um, have, uh, might be blocked by profanity filters because the first oh. one or the second one has got, um, you know, penis in it yeah. and uh, shiitake what mush. About, what about light water country park? There's nothing about it. The third is, one. Uh, Yeah, I, d I don't know why, unless there's, I'm not too sure, I'm not too sure why that one would, yeah. But if I don't think we can search for an expression in Wikipedia or, or even in Google. Yes, I think. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know why. But I can. I can see. <laughs> Even with the evaluate. Oh, so it's. I guess it's because like classic here has got the word arsenal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, basement has got semen. Okay. So it. it I don't know. <laughs> but I've learned about this first time. Uh, I need to do more research to understand. Okay, but those are some of the common words which is at the down. Yeah. Um, and like I guess they're not always okay. blocked. It's just some people have found that these words have been blocked on some websites. Okay. So, uh, if you've got like some sort of profanity filter. Okay, that's that's really nice to know, and it it would be really nice for the business officials websites and those kind of websites to actually do this kind of filters and check. They can alter the words and have some, uh, what do I say, the words with a similar meaning. Yeah. I uh, yeah. I guess if you're doing, if you're like building an online forum where some people can say some things, I guess it's it's you might think of introducing some profanity filters because yes. maybe on reddit you want to prevent people from swearing or yeah. being nasty to each other or something like that but that's really true um but then it might mean that someone can't search for the hospital Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, anyway uh there's like interesting bugs that can come about from that. Yes.
we haven't even talked about functional requirements such as password resets. Is there a is there a timeout? Uh, is there a limit? Are there any password requirements? Like sometimes you get those really annoying uh, funky strings. You know, it has to have like two special characters, two numbers. Yes, and... yes, 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 yes. I, I get that. Yeah. So those kind of requirements are really... <laughs> they are really annoying and they don't increase security because they actually make uh, passwords hard for humans to remember and easy for machines to crack. That's true. Because if you've, if you've been asked to do a funky password, it's more likely to be shorter. Well, where exactly you mean? Um, so okay. if you've got a password requirement that says requires two numbers, two letters, uh, two whatever, um, you're, yeah, you're more likely to come up with just a password of eight characters, the bare minimum needed to satisfy the, the complicated password requirements. Yes. But if you had a password that was actually four random words from the from the dictionary, um, I think horse battery, uh, horse battery staple um, is an XKCD comic based on password strength. Okay. Um, so like this password is really hard to remember, but it's also really easy for a computer to hack this password. Um, it basically takes, um, you know, maybe the computer three days to guess this password. Okay. Um, hard to remember. But if you just did four random common words from the dictionary, so this is correct horse battery staple, that would take 550 years for a computer to guess. I really didn't know about it. But what what password filter would let you have just all lowercase letters yeah that's true nowadays everybody is asking for one tabs one uh one special character or some numeric some particular length of the character yeah and mm -hmm. if you yeah if you just let people do longer passwords without yeah. any funky characters or whatnot it's actually harder to hack and easier to remember. That's true. Cool. I think That's we're cool. actually uh, fairly close to time. Yeah. Um, so if, if someone was just starting in their testing career and they just so happened to watch this video, what type of advice would you have someone who's early on in their career, just starting out? Um, I would ask them to actually network with their testers and get along with their testers like this and be more open and involved in a lot of discussions like in Slack or in any other networking uh, forum so that they can learn about it. It's easy and it's, it, you will get through it. So uh, a learning and networking mindset. Yeah. Having Having a learning mindset as well as networking mindset. Cool. I think that's uh, pretty solid advice for anyone who's uh, trying to learn. Um, and uh, I would say that networking is is king. Um, I've gotten like my last four job offers from just having, you know, sp going to meetup events, uh, speaking at conferences, and having having a reputation in the in the industry. That's true. I remember when you talk about reputation, that's why Zerin Warren Bog, he have always mentioned bother about reputation first, then money or any other thing. Mm. And um, how long have you uh, lived in Spain? Have you always lived in Spain? Um, I've been living for past two and a half years and more than like uh, I've just uh, like when I came uh, initially two, three, three months was OK. And after that, COVID. 19 have been like so we are all, all staying at home so i've really not enjoyed going around and seeing around or like doing things yeah around. yeah it's been really hard to to try and do any networking or do a lot of these things uh like get to know other people in the in the community when there's been no no in-person events yeah. is there a is there a ministry of testing group in spain somewhere uh, 
Yeah, it is there in the place where Shahar was as well as in uh, like Madrid. And there's another conference, but some of the, those aren't specifically in uh, what is a Spanish, so it makes little things a little bit harder. Okay. Um, because I'm still you... learning Spanish. <laughs> I was going to ask, how, how's your Spanish? Espanol? Uh, yeah, just mucho, mucho, uh, mucho, mucho habla Espanol. Yeah, I, I, I like maybe learn a little bit of Duolingo and then I'm like, I, yeah, I don't know any Spanish, but yeah, it can be hard to, um, I guess, yeah. come yeah, to a because, foreign country. Uh, some of the local, uh, even there is a ministry of uh, testing Saragossa, which is running by Adidas, but they have an event completely in Spanish. So, mm. uh, like, if, even though I'm studying over there, it really doesn't make sense for me to go over there and join and do anything. Yeah, like that, that would introduce a barrier to that, that networking. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I haven't really but, thought about that. I think, I think with COVID-19, this sort of uh, online uh, conversation, pair testing have been like a lot more. So those are helping me to get along with new people, learning with them, uh, sharing my ideas, uh, getting things from them. So those are really nice. And I'm, I'm just not like, it, it, like, even though I'm not doing actively anything, but I'm actually like, having uh, i'm not losing this kind of even like if i'm if i get to know somebody is doing something and they're asking me i'll not lose this kind of opportunity so yeah this, this and that's really interesting uh, I, I get to know about the people and also network and i also learn something from them cool um well i think i will wish everyone who's been watching uh, a great rest of their day and I hope you learned something new. I certainly learned a few new things about testing username and password fields, uh, particularly how to potentially do a slow Loris attack. I might look into some of the tools that might uh, help support that type of testing. And it's been such a pleasure uh, having you on the show today, Trisha. Thank you. It was awesome for me. Also, I, I could learn many new things from you and it was a pleasure for, for me to have a pair testing with you.